I think the first thing, because my experience of the European Parliament, one, going to put one of my hobby horses in relation to this, because it's very much related to the development, is in the relation to fisheries. But just to say, first of all, I think what we have to do, both at a European level and at a national level, is to promote fair trade. That, I think, is, is a key priority. And to expose the so-called free trade agenda, it's not a free trade. It's a free reign for the people who can actually exploit the developing countries. But in actual fact, it, it's not free. It's people are paying for it and paying huge expense. And the one issue I just want to focus on, because in my experience, I was 10 years in the European Parliament and I was the Green Party's Green Group spokesperson in fisheries. And one of the first reports they ever did was on the EU's fishing agreement with Madagascar. Now, as you know, the EU has these fishing agreements with um, various different uh, developing countries. And I really got an eye opener because I assumed up until then that these fishing agreements were actually giving these poorer countries money and helping them. In actual fact, when I did the report, I found out that the money, first of all, goes to the government. It doesn't go to the local coastal fishing communities. Uh, the fishing communities get zilch out of it. The government uses whatever way it wants. The EU is then allowed to go in uh, with their overcapacity, export it out of the EU into other places, fish without any proper regulations, and basically decimate the local fishing industry, but also decimate the local coastal communities and their food supplies. And I was really got a shock at the type of inequality and the blatant uh, ex ex uh, um, exploitation of the, particularly the West African countries. And I remember at the time when I was giving my, presenting my report in the European Parliament, I said to the European Commission representative, look, there is a major problem here in relation to even coastal communities food supplies because they very much depend on fish for food. And the representative of the Commission said <coughs> at the meeting, a public meeting, he says, well, they can follow the EU vessels and pick up the discards. Now, that was the attitude to it, and I still remember that stuck in my head. Later on, I actually did an own initiative report, because the other thing is, and we have this in Ireland, we're all part of this system that's exploiting these developing countries. We can talk about aid, but you know, what are we talking about aid for when at the same time we're actually destroying their uh, way of life, their actual own economy, and even their own food supplies? We had, a few years ago, this huge media hype over a massive big vessel in Ireland, the Atlantic Dawn was launched, the world's biggest pelagic trawler. No one looked at the consequences of this big pelagic trawler. Where was it going to go? Ireland was already over capacity. They shipped it out under a flags of convenience agreement and it was sh uh, fishing off the west coast of um, a a Africa. And it was basically called a ship from hell. But anyway, as a result of that, they, they, they argued to get it on the EU register, and then they removed other vessels. The owner of that removed other vessels and put them onto these flags of convenience uh, agreements. And why, I'm, I, why I did the own initiative report in the Parliament, which actually passed by a huge majority, to put pressure on the Commission to look at the fact that these huge trawlers go, they reflag to other countries, they can fly to convenience countries, which means basically they can fish without any controls, without, without apply, if, even complying with the rules that EU fishermen would have to comply with. And then the fish are coming where? Back into the European Union food supplies. So we're actually allowing these people to exploit these countries without the rules, and then we're actually allowing them to profit from us. And the Commission were asked at the time to actually move on this. I'm still, I'm left the Parliament now five years, and I'm still waiting to see advancement on that, because the Parliament can't initiate legislation, but it's one of the areas where we can actually do it is through own initiatives. Post and so what I'm saying here in relation to development, it's not just development aid, but it's also looking at the policies of the EU. And that's just one example, but I just thought it was interesting to mention, is one example of how the EU policies themselves while you might be giving them money with one hand, you're taking huge amounts back with the other. And you have to, we have to end that. We have to ensure that we're not exploiting other parts of the world, basically for our own self-interest. And that the inequality that is there in relation to funding has to be addressed, and that there's no strings attached to the funding, and these people have a right to their own resources. Thank you.